Hi guys, this is the second part of my video regarding identifying your application build, so uh, office slash access uh, build number and how you can either update it or revert it. Now I say access, but in reality it's going to affect your entire office installation. So the same is true for Excel or Word, PowerPoint, doesn't make a difference. Now, uh, why would we need to do a command to uh, roll back office that's well, quite simple uh, as we've seen for the past i'm not even sure now three four five years since this whole click to run technology came out um, quite often updates break things and um, the the patch tuesday as we call it when microsoft pushes out updates quite often that's when we find out in a panic that suddenly our database doesn't work anymore or suddenly it's popping up these errors and you know, quite often the easiest thing to do, uh, since people can keep working and avoid downtime and phenomenal costs, is to simply revert back to a prior build. Now I'm talking about reverting back, but this command also allows you to move forward. What it does in reality is it tells Office, I want you to install this build specifically. Now remember, for this to work, however, you need to also disable the automatic updates of Office. Otherwise, you can tell Office to update to a specific build all you want, but at the next occasion, it's going to always try to update over and over and over. So you're in a constant battle with the automatic update. So just be sure to knock that off first, then run your command, and then you'll have peace of mind. And then obviously, if Microsoft solves the problem, then you can re-enable automatic updates and stay up to date currently on any new features or any bug fixes that they actually uh, put out. So let's get into it. It's pretty simple. Once again, we're going to go to the file account and we're going to come to the update, office updates. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to disable updates. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to say yes. And now my automatic updates are disabled. Now I'm ready to proceed. Now in our case, as I saw in last uh, week, we see the build number here. And I'm going to just copy it. So I'm going to open this dialog, which allows me to copy. And I'm going to copy. Okay. And I'm going to go to the web page that we saw last time. And I'm going to do a search for my build. And voila. Or if I scroll a little lower, I'm running the latest version. So this is a perfect scenario. Let's pretend the patch Tuesday. I just got an update. My database broke. I'm running the latest version. What do I do? Well, this is when I'm going to revert back to a prior build. Now, the question is, how far back do I go? Do I revert to this one or do I go further back? That all depends on you, your update process, uh, what you know caused the problem. If you disable updates and then you apply an update only every, let's say, two months, well, you will have skipped over a whole bunch of updates. So you will have gone, let's say, from July 12th and suddenly you're now running the September. You don't know where that latest bug may have been introduced. So how far back do you go? It's hard to say. So a lot of this can be trial and error. And what you may do is you may go back one. Yeah, oh, the error is still there. And then I'll go back another one. Oh, the bug's still there. I'll go back another one. Oh, problem solved. So you just stick there. So you can go back as much as you want. Or you can just say, well, I didn't have the problem in July. I'm going back to July. And who cares about the rest of it? There's no right or wrong answer here. It really isn't. But a lot of it is truly trial and error in certain scenarios. So for our uh, case, let's, let's say we are going to go back to July 12th. So I'm going to copy that build. Um, but before we actually do that, the first thing we actually have to do is... Um, we need to open the command prompt. So I'm going to come here in the type to search bar. And I'm going to type in CMD and it brings up command prompt. That's fine. The important thing here, however, is you have to absolutely right click on it and select run as administrator. If you don't run it as an administrator, it will allow you to do the entire process but it will never actually execute the command. Nothing will actually happen and it doesn't even report back an error. So you're just left there dumbfounded as to what is the problem. So we're going to authorize it to run as an administrator. Now my dialogue is up, my command prompt. 
The next thing we have to do, it's a two-part command. First part is we want to go to the directory that has the executable that we need to run. And the second command is we run the executable. So the first thing is we need to go into the directory. Now I've always found it easier instead of typing all of this out manually, I prefer to open Windows Explorer. Now I have an icon, but if you don't, just type Windows key E. And by experience, I know that I'll go on the C, Program Files, Common Files, Microsoft Shared, click to run. And if you scroll down, you will find the Office click to run client exe. And that's what we're after. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to click my address bar and I'm going to copy this path. And then I'm going to come back to my command prompt and I'm going to change directory. So I'm going to do CD, change directory, space. I'm going to right click with my mouse and it's going to paste that full path for me so I don't have to type it. And I'll press enter. Now I'm in that folder. Now we get into actually running the command. And the command is pretty straightforward. So you type the exe's name, uh, uppercase, lowercase, really doesn't make a difference. So let's just simplify our life and leave it as is. Office, click to run, client, exe. And here we go with the command. The command is space, forward slash update, space, user, space, update to version, equal sign, and then the full version. So we're going to come back to the web page. I'm going to copy that build number, but remember, it's not the full build number. We're missing the prefix, the 16.0 in my case. And then I'm going to right click again to paste the build number. And before executing, I close all of my office applications. Now I'm ready to run the command. I press enter. Wait a second, and I'm going to just minimize this for a second. You'll see this dialog shows up. So Microsoft is in the process of downloading what it needs, configuring what it needs, and it will take a couple minutes, but eventually we'll get there. And there you go, it's uh, updated and ready to roll. So we'll close the dialog, <clears throat> reopen access, open any database, go to file, account, and we are now running 2206. Remember, we were originally running 2208, and now we're 2206. And you know, you test out your database, you check and see if the problem still exists, and then you can decide, I want to go back further. No, I want to try the next one. And you just go back to your command prompt, you bring back up your command, and all you have to do is change this build number. I now want to do this one here instead. Copy it, come back, paste it, press enter, and it's now going to bump you from the uh, 20246 to the 20264 if I execute it. That's how hard it is to update or revert a build. I hope uh, this helps you guys out and uh, see you in the next video. Please, if you uh, like the video, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, leave me some comments, let me know uh, what subjects you'd like uh, covered in future videos. Have a great day, guys.